We don't have a PowerPoint. We don't do PowerPoint very well. <laughs> <laughs> and you're getting a two for today. <laughs> So I'm going to introduce Kelly, and then she's going to introduce me. <laughs> okay, Kelly Gallagher. I met Kelly many, many years ago at a California Dental Board meeting. And I knew the day that I met her that she is somebody that I really need to get to know and to work with. This woman is a five-time cancer survivor. I can't even, I, I don't keep track anymore of how many pacemakers Six. she's had. <laughs> and she is my hero, right. my mentor. I, I cannot even explain to you how important this woman is to humanity. And she's a badass, okay? So uh, she is one of the producers of the documentary Vaxxed. She is doing a, a, an event next month called Doctors Who Rock. She is a visionary. She's so far ahead of the game, folks, that you know it's not even worth talking about. But anyway, she's also my partner in crime. And I love this girl. Thank you, Miss Anita. Um, and and uh, Anita, I will re recall that same day, because we should call it what happened was. Um, Anita, I met on May 10th of 2001 at a California Dental Board hearing. And I went there to do a radio show. I was doing eight minutes for serious broadcasting. I had no idea what I was getting into because I already knew mercury was toxic. I was going through mercury detox, silicone detox, every kind of detox to have a bone marrow transplant. So I had done a lot of this. But what I didn't know was that there were dental boards. I had no idea that there were medical boards and dental boards that regulated all these things. So when I went to that first California dental board hearing, Anita was the first person that I met. She had a stack of paper. She was sending out press kits. And she, y'all, is really the engine behind the Mercury, what became the Mercury movement. Um, she enrolled me at one point. You know, it was like, as she meets me once, I'm doing radio. I do this radio interview. While I'm doing radio at the dental board hearing, I realized that the 17 fillings I had jackhammered out of my head for vanity's reasons in like 1990, was what gave me cancer for the second time. And I was re-diagnosed after nine years having Hodgkin's lymphoma. And so at that, when I was re-diagnosed, I had no idea why until I was at the dental board hearing with Anita, who was there with Charlie Brown and all of Boyd Hale, all the greats were there. Didn't know they were the greats. And she starts calling me after this meeting's over, you need to make a movie. <laughs> I'm like, I think I was making radio when I saw you. How do you even know I came from TV? So, Anita? That's what happened. And that's what happened was. So, moving forward, after that fateful meeting. That I tried uh, to get out of everything. I didn't want to do it. I remember like, okay, God, if you really want me to do this. Because I had made a promise to God when I was having a bone marrow transplant at Cedar sinai And I thought I was never getting out of the hospital again. I'm like, all right, dude. I did a lot of bad things in the 80s. And if you just let me out of here, I promise I'll do the right thing. But send me signs. He sent me Anita. <laughs> <laughs> what a sign. You can't miss me and you can't miss hearing me because I don't even need a mic. Right, but, you know. right. I, go, I, I leave this dental board here and I go to Wyoming. My friends have like a five gazillion dollar bed and breakfast. For, we're there for free with all these models and actors and everything. And the phone's ringing. And I'm like, can't hear you. She's like, you have to make a movie. Can't hear you. And, you know, I said, I promise I'll meet you when I get home. She's like in my living room when I got home. <laughs> you have to be relentless. So our talk is about activism in the 21st century, Are you right? you here to see our notes? <laughs> <laughs> we, 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 you know, we've been at this so long, we're just going to talk because that's, you know, this is who we are. This is what we do. And it's not just today. It's every day, day after day, year after year. <laughs> And you know, we're still doing it. You know, God bless the people that came before us because we're standing on their shoulders like the Hal Huggins, you know, uh, like the Olympio Pintos from Brazil who really started this mercury free dentistry movement from his parents in the 1920s and it came out of Brazil. So that's a fun fact. Why don't we ask, how many people still have mercury fillings in your head? Okay. Uh, okay. How many people are having kind of, kind of chronic illness, fibromyalgia, ADD? Okay. How many people have, have tried to get any of them out? Okay. Um. Well, I'm, I, I'm coming over here because they're saying, come, come closer. Come, come closer. closer, darling. Okay. Come closer. <laughs> 
It is if you do it wrong. And that's one of the things that Anita and I both worked on, and she ended up working with the International Academy of Oral Medicine and Toxicology on a safe removal protocol. Super important. If you don't have oxygen on your nose and they're not putting a rubber dam in your mouth and you don't have, you know, uh, mercury ionization machines in the room and there's a whole, like, there's a snorkel. Yeah, the protocol for removal, folks, and this is, I, I know Dr. Blanche Gruby was before us, and unfortunately she, she got to like slide five, right? <laughs> and then came the good stuff, no, but the, the crazy thing is, um, you know, we're, we're, we're this little tribe of people trying to change the world, and, 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 and I gotta tell you guys, we are at a tipping point on this whole mercury movement. Um, we, did, we did make a film, by the way. So yes. she got me to make a movie. We went on the road. We started in 2001. We went on the road in 2002. We went around the country in a motorhome. Before there was Google, before there was YouTube, before we could upload it and everybody could see our daily antics, we did this. Okay, but let me tell you this. Okay, okay this is the visionary of this one right here. <laughs> I was just we were early. doing, um, like, what is that called? Reality TV. Oh, like road rules that and, mattered and, back then. But real reality TV 20 years ago, folks, like way before the Kardashians, if you know who they are. And that is no joke. Sorry. But, but Kelly, <laughs> Kelly is, is, a, is a maniac. And I mean, she got us all in a motor home and we went through the United States and Canada. We got sponsorship through various, like the mercury vapor analyzer. I mean, we were the first to do all of these things that now are kind of common. In fact, we got a motorhome from El Monte RV. We got Dickies gave us clothes. Every we were all hooked up. We went to see Boyd Haley. We drove to. We left it from Texas in three days. We got the money, and in like three days, we were like in this motorhome with no plan except that we knew who we had to go see. So the plan was, you know, e -e 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 across the country. So we got there. Went to see uh, uh, Professor Dr. Boyd Haley, who has the essentially the solution to Alzheimer's and every chronic illness, mercury detoxification drug coming down the market in phase three clinical trials right now. That's another story. We went to see Hal Huggins, our hero, her hero. We went to see Ernie Mezzi in the bushes of Canada who had done all the studies on the NHANES and really trying to prove all of this because- Okay, I gotta tell them about the NHANES, what the NHANES is. The NHANES is a study that is done by the United States government. It's a, a national population study that looks at all of the health and wellness of various things throughout the extreme population, kids to adults and so on. Nobody knew that they were looking at dental mercury. And this Canadian guy was able to get the statistical analysis done. An engineer. Yes. Because he, was he, knew that was mercury, he knew mercury was bad. Well, he was poisoned, and, and he was really mad about it. So what he wound up doing is he got someone to take all of the raw data and do a statistical analysis and discover the propensity for cancer was um, two, two fillings caused X disease, three fillings X, and so on and so forth. After six fillings, your propensity for cancer went up you know, tenfold, for example. You know, I don't have the exact numbers, but to make a long story short, Here's a Canadian dude finding out about our research and doing something yeah, with it. Taxpayer funded research that they do not give us the answer to the problem that we all know we have within the research. So this guy did it and he came to our motorhome. We were in Canada at midnight, midnight, bam, 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 in the middle of the woods and he's you know, there to give it. So uh, you know, one day we'll get this movie done. Uh, we'll, yeah, I had iron poisoning, six pacemakers, all that. Yeah, so you during all of this event, Kelly is, is, is dropping and, and coming back to life every, you know, once a year, you know, it's an episode. I, I think she's just trying to go into the hospitals to take a break because her mind doesn't stop. And, you know, the thing about activism is you, know, you have to be so passionate and you cannot let all this external stuff get in your way of continuing to do what you do. You got to want to. Yeah, and we've been at it, you know, it's almost two decades now, and we're still at it. I just can't, I, I, I just, I, I really couldn't handle the lie. You know, when I saw people testifying, lawyers, doctors, activists, scientists before a dental board that sat in the front of the room and ate candy and checked their cell phone or picking their teeth, you know, and not listening, I was so incensed and probably how you were when you first found out. This is the Aaron Brockovich of Mercury right here. <laughs> And so, you know, we've had no rest, but we, we did, we went around the country, 
then we got sponsored. We went around the world. We went to the UN. Um, we were, you know, b bumbled into the UN, screwed up the State Department, screwed up the EPA, complain wanted to know why we were there. We wanted to know why they cared, you know? <laughs> They're like, well, this is about the, the global transport of mercury. It's not about dental fillings. We said, well, who told you we were here about dental fillings? So, you know, we've been playing this little game with them, but we brought a few mercury vapor machines to the United Nations in 2002. And, and at the time, uh, Anita's husband, Pedro, stood in the back of the room with this mercury vapor machine that is for, for industrial hygiene. They use it in manufacturing. And he, had, and he would put it in people's mouths and watch the off gas. The African nation people were like, what the? Are, we had no idea. They're all working on the environment and trying to get it out of this and chloralkali plants and cremation and this and that and the other thing. What about your mouth? <laughs> you know, is this a biohazardous container? We just, it's toxic before it goes in. It's stuck at waste after it comes out, but for some reason in our mouths it's okay. So we have been having this argument with these people because I'm sure you've all had problems at the dentist where they say, it's no problem, or it's too much of a problem, or leave it alone, or we don't know what to do with it. Or oh, those people are crazy. Well, they are not crazy. You are not crazy, but it is all in your head. And Al um, Huggins was right. He certainly was. Great it book. It is all in your head. And if you guys don't have that book, you need to read it. It's, it's, it's all in your head. <laughs> and, and, and it's fact, all in it your really, head. It really is. And so um, we wind up at the UN and the United Nations. and In Geneva, not New they, York. <laughs> yeah, in Geneva. And they wind up. And we've got another rock star just came in the back of the room on the Mercury front. Ooh, there he is. Don't, 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 don't let him don't, escape. Don't run away. <laughs> Dr. Dr. Dave Simone. Simone. <laughs> another, He'll be speaking tomorrow at 2 p.m., folks. Another UN representative right there and a Chicago dentist. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. <laughs> but um, at the UN level, they did everything to suppress the fact that mercury in dental fillings was a problem. And I'm telling you, when I say everything that they could possibly do, it, you know, there's a, a, it's another language at the UN level, and there's a specific protocol of how you're able to address all these countries. It's called bury you in paper so that you can't keep up with what they're doing while they change the wording. <laughs> and that's what it's all about. It's, it's about the words. It's a word game. and. What wound up happening from our first time going there is that they, they did develop this treaty, and in 2013 it was concluded. It's called the Minamata Convention on Mercury Treaty. So from 2002, which was the first time we were there, till 2013, we actually have a treaty. Now, the United States, it's one of the only environmental treaties that we ratified, and the system within the UN means that you could participate and then you sign the treaty, and when you ratify the treaty, that means you accept the language within the treaty, and you're going to follow the treaty. And it went into effect, um, I think, in 2017, where they had 50 countries that actually ratified the treaty. So we are in the upside of the treaty and all of the products and processes that need to be banned using mercury. So. But there's no enforcement agency, so it's all like big circular motion. And then by the time you get it done, all the people who are in charge are dead or quit, and it's a new cycle of people, and the bullshit, excuse my language, continues. But here's the kicker with dental mercury. Except that we're here. <laughs> yeah, we're still here. <laughs> Barely. Um, <laughs> a few times they've tried to bump us off. <laughs> this is true. But um, there's two things, and they call it intentional use products. Two are in the human body. Vaccines and dental mercury. The only two that they didn't want to get out of the system. Well, well, the treaty doesn't have vaccines in it. You know, it didn't, it didn't make it into the treaty, but dental mercury did on a phase down, which means it, infinitely it can go on forever and ever and ever, but, but not this time. You know, we're going into this phase right now where we have enough power of research, and Dr. Blanche and I just published a paper on the life cycle of dental mercury and how it's a global pollutant. Wait, I, I want to stop there for a minute. Anita, this is, uh, this is a rock star move. I mean, Anita, you, she's not a PhD. Mm -mm. No. 
but she, of all the people in this Mercury movement, managed to put all the paperwork, get the research together, and do, did you do a review of the literature on, on, on mercury as a global pollutant, which, you know, has anybody realized that when they cremate people in your neighborhood, it off gases? Yeah, they don't take out your mercury fillings before they cremate you, so your whole neighborhood has got like a cloud going up, but nobody's notified us. There's so many uses out there right now, and so, so Anita, Anita wrote this paper with Blanche Gruby, who just walked in in the back, Dr. Blanche Gruby, another mercury rock star, and the um, heir to the Hal Huggins, it's all in your head book that we just told you about. Um, she's got another book coming out in a minute with Anita also. Um, so it's, yeah, there's so, many, there's so many areas that we never knew. I mean, we're at the UN and they're talking about mercury and, and cosmetics and we're like, what? Who knew it's in your mascara? Meanwhile, I'm calling up the WHO, who's not there, that the, the chair is empty and the, the card is there. And they're like, what meeting? We're like, they're talking about health and mercury across the street from your building. Why isn't anybody here? Okay, wait, this is where Kelly <laughs> gets she in does trouble. She a disappearing act. And, you know, you got to take risks, but sometimes the risks that you take, and she's, she's a much higher level risk taker than I am. I'm Are you going to bust me for my bu getting busted? Well, <laughs> she, she <laughs> almost got arrested at the French-Swiss border because she was taking pictures. Video. Video of the, the mission. Okay, do you all know what a mission is? Yeah. I did. I thought it was a church. Yeah, it was the U.S. Embassy one year post 9-11, covered with barbed wire. I'm like shooting out the window of the car. I see barbed wire, men with guns. Ooh, wow, U.S. flag. Oh, camera pointing back at me. And pretty soon I'm like, I say to the Frenchman driving me across the border, I said, did you ever get pulled over here? He said, oh, no, no, we've got passes on our car. Six Interpol police <laughs> officers. I'm putting the tape in my large bra and um you know to hide my tape right and um there and here they take my passport and everybody speaks french i'm like bonjour wee <laughs> <laughs> oui, wee oui. that's about the extent of it and i really you know at that moment in time we had really uh, angered the state department and the epa we were doing a mission for congressman dan burton back in washington dc who was on government reform so you know i was like we can't fly now we don't know what to do you have 50 tapes that are going to incriminate these people. <laughs> so uh, we um, made copies of the ones that mattered. We stayed extra. All the we'd already sent all the guys home, so it's like me and Anita. <laughs> Here we are, Switzerland. Hi, we're afraid, but doesn't matter. We did it anyway. We FedEx tapes home. We FedEx tapes. We set, left some, and we managed to get back through the border without being arrested. But we had to go straight to Washington to see Congressman Dan Burton and show him the tapes with a meeting in between Oliver North and I think Ashcroft. I was like sweating <laughs> bullets down the side of my head sitting in his lobby waiting to go in. So, you know, being an activist is um, interesting to say the least. Um, I don't know if you guys are here to, you need help to get your mercury out or whether you want to, you know, be as crazy as we were and go out and do something about it. I think you have a question. You have a question? Yeah, I do. Okay. So, um, Close, okay. Close, uh, close, like right on your mouth. Can you hear me? Can yeah. you hear me? Can, can you hear me now? Yeah. Okay, okay. Wow, you girls are interesting. <laughs> <laughs> you are like all over the map. <laughs> okay, so, um, the because I was like, when I come here, I was like, okay, I think I'm coming for dental, and we're going to talk about amalgams and mercury and all that, so I was a little confused, because that was a concern that I have. I worked for three different dental professors, okay? Ooh. And... Hey, Tanner, what's up? <laughs> Sending you a kiss back there. Okay, should I keep talking? Yeah, go for it. Okay, so the question I have is about amalgam. So obviously the protocol you mentioned to get them removed, I'm familiar with that. Um, I've also heard the next level is to put herbs under your tongue. Certain herbs will help absorb that toxicity. And then I've also heard like chewing gum will also create more of that off gas. Coffee, hot liquids create more oh, off gas, things like that. that. Yeah. So that was some of the questions I had. So, and then you also mentioned mascara. So, basically, the question I'm I'm wanting to know about is like, what are these concerns? I mean, what do I need to be aware of with that? 
And then also something I recently found out, and I don't know if this is where Dr. Simone, am I saying that correctly, comes in, is I didn't realize I was getting my amalgams replaced and my fillings were not BPA free. And that created another like red flag. Uh, there's there's inexpensive materials that you buy that have all kinds of stuff in it. I don't buy them. I doubt Blanche does too. Um, but uh, the problem is is that there is no perfect material. Your tooth was the perfect material. So you go for the least toxic material you can find, and then you can do the different testing, the biocomp testing, Clifford testing, and then try to see what works best for you. And even if you make a porcelain inlay, you still have to use a bonded cement to put it in with. So you can't get away from it 100%. So what you do is you try to approach zero toxicity as much as you can and stay away from really hot foods because that melts plastic, if I'm not mistaken, right? But um, Dr. Blanche, she has a test available, a yeah. biocompatibility test. Yeah. Biocomp Laboratories in Colorado Springs does a, does a serum test and tells you which dental material you are least reactive to. There's no such thing as no reactivity because the only thing your body really likes is you. Anything else, you're, you're, maybe you'll get to least reactive, but never. there's no such thing as no reactivity. So you have a test like that done ahead of time before you go to the dentist and then you give the book to your dentist and you say listen you're not putting anything in my mouth that's not on my least reactive list period end of story biocomp bio b-i-o-c-o-m-p biocomp laboratories in colorado springs okay biocomp yeah hal huggins was the developer of the laboratory. There we go. Thank <laughs> you. There we go. There's my girl. Right. Right. Um, thank you. We have, uh, yes, she. W so, so, thank you for answering that because I really wanted to know with that with the dental material coming from that background. But I also want to know what are these other things that we need to be concerned. So you mentioned mascara and like, okay, if we live close to a crematorium, what else is do we need to know about? Please tell. Do tell. Uh, yeah, do tell. Do tell. Okay. <clears throat> here, here, here's the deal. You would not be, you actually you would be amazed at how many people live close to a crematorium and you don't even know it, man. I'm, I'm really not kidding you. And the problem is that when Blanche and I were doing this paper, the research is minuscule, to say the least, because they don't want you to know. And so we dug and dug and dug. There was a few papers on crematorium and how bad it is, and if you live close by, what the, what the problems are with that. But they're not doing the research because everybody knows. So the, the, there's a very small amount of well, papers. Well, for the same reason, for the same reason that you know, I just saw come out after 20, 18 and 0.7 years of working on this topic, we just see that the the paper that just came out again from the Dental Association oh. says dental amalgam is a safe and effective dental restorative treatment. After eight years of arguing, I mean, when I started with this, what I told you, the dental board, for nine years, these people had managed to keep the word mercury out of a fact sheet about a silver filling, which is 50 percent mercury. So that's the power of lobbyists that really know what they're doing. They just T-bone the legislation and, you know, another motion and another sideways, and it doesn't really matter what you got going on because people want to know the truth, but they know the system. And so, you know, I think for, how, for years they were T-boning that. And it, when I just read this, after going to the UN, we sat on an FDI, what is it, the World Dental Federation um, phone call. <laughs> Oh, yeah, a couple check months this ago. <laughs> and this is, okay, so after the 10, how many, wait, from 2002 to 2017, this mercury, it was at first a global assessment on mercury, then the INC, and then the mercury, the Minamata Treaty. So all these years of working on mercury, 
and we get on the World Federation, Dental Federation call, and what happens? Oh, boy. They didn't know we were going to be on that call. <laughs> this was May 14th, 2019, okay? Yeah. This is like the other day. And I, <laughs> Sick. We're, we're, you know, Kelly's in California, and I'm in, in uh, Florida, so the time difference, and she, I was up I, I'm at like five. texting her saying, man, are you up? You got to make the call. You got to make the call. So she and I are on this call, and the World Dental Association is saying. Federation. Yeah, well, it, it's the same as the ADA. They're all the same bunch. You know, we're in the ADA territory, so y'all, you know, yeah, look we're in their you. hometown. Yeah. Anybody here? <laughs> so they are saying on this conference call, it's a webinar, that, oh, we want dental mercury to continue. Uh, they don't call it dental mercury. They call it amalgam. We want amalgam to stay inside um, the usage globally for another 10 years. So 2030, they're thinking, yeah, maybe we can get rid of it by then. And they are concerned because this next UN meeting next month is going to be a come to Jesus moment. And they are going to be put to the test to see if other countries Groups of countries are going to go and ask for a ban. You can just leave the mic with me if that's okay. <laughs> uh, so, so what are you doing? Like, you know, because I I have a lot of experience in media here in Chicago. Okay, and so it's like, what are you doing? You you mentioned you have experience with radio. Right. So what do you? I mean, I'm hearing these global things that you're doing, but what are you doing? Like, say, like with so social networking. Like, I mean, to me, it seems like if you put something like that on Facebook or YouTube or whatever, there, I mean. There's a lot of Mercury groups out there. I mean, you know, we've done what we can do. We, we, you know, we made a movie, which we're going to probably finish in the, the beginning of next year, okay. in 2020. Um, there's a, a lot of people out, you know, that put these, you know, Mercury awareness groups are online. But it's, you know, you, you, again, it's you have to know what you're looking for. You, you have to know what your issue is. And there's a lot of people to connect with. Yeah, because I can see where even here in Chicago, a lot of the news stations, you know, if they have an, an open slot, they would fill it with on their health watch segments. I mean, you, I've, you think so? I've got, oh, yeah, I've gotten many doctors on that. I know, but not about this topic. Hold, hold on, kids. <laughs> I, I'm going to tell you what the deal is, okay? When our paper came out, I had delegates, and I, I'm telling you, you know, they call them NGOs, non-governmental organizations, which would be your Greenpeace and your, your, you know, um, any NRDC, yes, uh, uh, National know, Oceana, all that. Kind all of, of, stuff. of these things, they're they're NGOs, non-governmental organizations, and we have they call us stakeholders within the UN body. And why I keep going back to the UN is because this is where you could actually get something done if you know the right people. So there are a lot of. NGO groups that are playing within this sandbox that actually do not want the end of mercury and dentistry also. Healthcare without harm. <laughs> yeah. Hello. Did you hear that? What she said? <laughs> healthcare without harm. Okay. Healthcare without harm is an NGO. They collect, they collect thermometers from hospitals around the world. That sounds like a great idea, doesn't it? Right, they collect mercury and then they give them a digital thermometer. They collect the mercury thermometers, but they wait until after they're broken before they collect them. So, a little slow, but so now it's already a hazmat issue, and now we're going to give you a digital thermometer instead of collecting them with them being. But know, but but why are they were you know here's and then the they're recycling the mercury. So let's get to that. It's an industry. So healthcare without harm is collecting mercury, recycling it back onto the market. And it winds up in our heads or in our vaccines. So I, I'm back or in to our the, gold mine. Well, there you go. The other problem: <laughs> dental mercury is used around the world to mine gold in this. What is called artisanal and small-scale gold mining. So that flow is a huge flow, and it is the top priority within the UN body within this treaty. I mean, I'm I'm like shocked at the things I'm hearing. And the thing is, it's like if the public knows that. I mean, it's like it gets the message out. Right, but out. the advertiser controls the airways. I used to work at NBC. So the problem that we have is that you've got the American Dental Association and their, their, their PACs, you know, the Chemistry Association and the Paffenberger Institute and every governmental, you know, NIST, all of them, you know, 
control the advertising on all of the stations. So when you try to have a, a story about this, you come back really fast with the, the lobby comes back on top of you and kills the story. We did a story in, um, this is what okay, was, okay, go. this was, this is our demise. Okay, you, you, I had you, a, <laughs> I'm going to tell an I have, go ahead. I, all right. Go ahead. I had a red hearse, okay, it was red hearse, we put silver flames down the side of it, it said Mercury Vapor Patrol. We figured nobody else was out patrolling vapor, so we're going to make our own, or, you know, or, yeah. Like we, Ghostbusters. Yeah, we were like Ghostbusters. We had a red hearse with like gangster type, you know, white walls and the whole thing. We're blah, 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 blah. And uh, in 2004, we flatbedded this hearse up to Sacramento, parked it in front of the Capitol. We had a 40 foot kind of tour bus with everybody. We were sponsored by Dickies and Teenage Millionaire. We had black pants and Converse, you know, tennis shoes. And we were cool. Shirts. We were super <laughs> cool. Everybody wore the shirts. There, we descended into Sacramento on this. And we were lobbying, you know, we went to see the governor, went to see everybody, and um, I get out of the tour bus and I see the, the main lobbyist for the American Dental Association and California Dental Association. Hello, Kathy Mudge. She says, hello, Kelly Gallagher. I said, you did a nice job of trying to kill our press today. She goes, oh, I'm just doing my job. And I stupidly say to her, well, you didn't get us yesterday. And she goes, oh, I'm working on it. <laughs> and before you know it, our story is now tied to the American Dental Association's website. So if you, for more information, go to ada.whatever. And, and the, the, the public member of the dental board was called into the attorney general's office. The you know, business that wrote a magazine article about us got investigated by the business bureau. We had everybody, and then she and I had an apartment that ended up with mold and a gas leak and us both getting super sick. I mean, my heart eventually stopping and her having an asthma attack beyond all asthma attacks. And, um, yeah. Yeah, kind of. Kind of. But, you know, we're still here. <laughs> and and the, the crazy They don't know what planet we're from. The, 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 it's, it's so curious because, you know, when you talk about activism and, and why do people do this and stuff, I mean, we're, we're, we're just giving it to you like hardcore straight, the way we need to give it to people so that, you know, it registers up here and you say, okay, wait a minute, I'm not going to buy this crap anymore. Sp Okay, if you all hear, heard of this documentary called Root Cause, here's a beautiful example about censorship media. and media, okay? Great movie. This dude in Australia. And he knew none of these politics, by the way. He knew none not of the garbage going on. He just made a great movie about something he found out about how root canals can kill you. And it was on Netflix. But Netflix is a global conglomeration so people in Australia I mean I was getting phone calls from people literally around the world saying hey Anita do you know these people I'm like yeah man they're my friends they shot the film they pulled it off the air and if you see what the end um, the endodontics association who who are the, the root canal specialists I mean they went after them they, they went did. after them and they got it off of Netflix okay I'm calling Netflix saying hey Why'd you take this off the air? And they're saying to me, oh, because we only had the licensing for it for X amount of time, and they didn't oh, renew the license. Right. Come on, people, okay? Right. Like, you're going to buy that? Like, I, uh, I'm going to sell you some snow in Alaska. How about that, you know? So the real concern is, like, we've got censorship, fascism, and, you know, turning into communism if we don't stop with what's going on this is you know the, our freedom to even know is being challenged and I don't know I think that's why we're here because this is about health freedom this is I mean I'm one of the producers of Vax the same thing with vaccines I mean they they covered up a movie that's about fraud Vax was about fraud in the government and they turned it into an anti-vaxxer movie instead of a film about fraud. The CDC was ripping up evidence that said African-American males given the MMR vaccine on time have a 300% increase in autism. Tuskegee, as far as I'm concerned, they just ripped it up, they wanted to throw it out, and the guy, the whistleblower, has still not been called before Congress while we're talking about every other stupid thing the wind blows and we have to talk about, you know, Trump has to go be impeached when meanwhile the people who really need to be persecuted can't even get before Congress and they're killing your kids and your grandkids and, and you and you you know take a look man if I tell you how much how toxic conventional dentistry is and, and just the materials themselves you guys would faint 
You can't believe this stuff. I mean, Blanche didn't get to the cancer slides <laughs> that were too far down the line. But I'm telling you, what the research is saying is that oral health and cancer, it's not the cancer's causing the problems in the, in the mouth. It's exactly the opposite. That it is no longer we are hypothesizing. This is a fact. And we are doing a paper that we are going to get out as soon as we can after all the other things that we're doing. But this is a life-changing, game-changing thing because the truth can no longer be suppressed. You know, I thank God for health freedom. She and I used to do this gig all the time. <laughs> this was, we started off on I think here. we brought that the hers in Long Beach. <laughs> yes, this, I think. Yeah, event. we did. Yeah. Yeah. We all need your help. Okay, we all need your help. Wow, that's my only good ear. <laughs> Do not scream in it. <laughs> I get excited. See, that I told you that I don't need a mic. I only can hear in one ear, and you just ruined that one. So get on the other side. Uh, well, I mean, it's really how can we help you help yourselves? Because right now, if you want to help us with a film, we'll be, we're, we're going to be working on that in January. Well, I, we both have a full schedule, I think, to the end of the year between papers and places to be. Um, if, keep us in your prayers. Yeah, keep That's us in a big your prayers. Deal, man. Especially, you know, I'm going to the UN for the Latin group, and I need to convince them on Tuesday and Wednesday that they have to join the African group because it's the UN is set up in grids. The African grid and the Latin American grid are the two strongest in numbers, and it's a numbers game. So they represent more than a majority of votes. And our goal, and my personal goal this time, is to have them conclude and concede and say, yes, we want a band date. Not the one that FDI wants, which is the World Dental Association. Never. For 2030, but within the next year or two. At the very latest, we have got to demand a real ban. And if you recall, the United States, Canada, New Zealand, um, Australia, none of these countries are even talking about banning mercury in dentistry when we are the countries that can most afford to do it. This is one of the other sales pitches that I have for this UN meeting next week. Nepal, which is the fourth largest country in the world, banned mercury and they said it couldn't be done and their population is 270 million. The fourth largest, one fourth, or 41% of all of Latin America and they banned it. Yeah, did you hear that on the news? Mm. Okay, in Indonesia. So, uh, you know, we all got to pay attention to w really what's going on out there. You're not going to hear this on CNN. I got, or you know, anywhere. Well, you're not going to hear it. You, we don't hear anything that we need to hear on the news anymore because it's all controlled by advertising. Somebody had a question we over here. Questions? Wait, right over here. Hold on. Why are dentists... <laughs> Why don't you want to ask one of the dentists that? You want to ask a dentist, Anita? Why don't you give the dentist that? <laughs> well, number one, we used to say in dental school, a monkey could put an amalgam filling in, all right? And it's the truth. You can shove it in with your thumb and carve it up a little bit, and it's perfectly okay. But that's not the real problem. The real problem is that the American Dental Association has always pushed amalgam as the best restorative material. And why is that? because the American Dental Association owns all the patents on am amalgam. They're only a trade organization. Now they right. say they They're not don't. a health organization, they're they a trade they organization. Don't. That's true, they don't. It's the American Dental Association Health Foundation that owns all of the patents on amalgam. So that includes half of the amalgam that winds up going into the gold mining. Only half of it, remember, only half of all the amalgam produced winds up in a dental office. The other half winds up in the hands of the poor Aborigines, the poor, um, uh, you know, Amazonian It's Indians. like government cheese. They give them mercury to mine. Right. They give them a cup. They right. give them a cup of mercury and tell them that if they play with this in the Amazon River, they can find enough gold particles to feed their family. And they do it. So there's, there's the whole, you know, always follow the money trail when you want to know what's really going on with something. You know, there's, there's the money trail. And if you want to back it up farther to like Dr. Joe Wallach, you know, if we had our minerals, if we were taking our minerals and 
had the right nutrients and didn't have like iodized salt and have our, our whole balance screwed up way back when, we might not have so many dental caries. We would have a healthier mouth. We would have a healthier body. So really, it's about remineralization of the body at an early age and having the proper nutrients, right? Yeah, but I was just next door across the street here. Yeah. And Dr. Wallach and um, George, they're all talking over right. there about the 90 holistic alternative doctors that have died mysterious deaths since 2015. So I think I'm gonna go get myself a bulletproof jacket. We got you. Yeah. Blanche, you got, a, you, got a, you got a light bulb around you. Okay, we have questions. Do you guys, who, whoever wants to ask a question, do you guys wanna like come up here? That would make it easier so we don't have to run around and, or you can shout if you have a big voice like mine. Oh, you can walk to the back of the room there. Too. Okay. You can walk to the back of the room, diva. Okay, and also, um, could you speak to, could you speak to um, the Mad Hatter from Alice in Wonderland? The Mad Hatter. Sure. <laughs> of course. Well, you they used to press hats with mercury, and and the the, hat, the the Hatters would go crazy. They called them "You're mad as a Hatter." They just went nuts from being exposed to mercury, and that's how they made those beautiful felt hats. Were all pressed with mercury, so. Well, they made it. There was a book called the, the American Disease that the Germans wrote. Um, and, and it profiled basically through America. It, it chronicled when amalgam became popular and all the wealthy people got sick. All they were the America, first. Because and then they were the doing dental Europe. care. And everybody loved that new car smell. You know what that new car smell is? Right. Oh, my goodness. Hey, listen. So I want to tell you guys, we're, we have to wrap up, but I also want to tell you I'm doing a project in Florida called. Doctors Who Rock, and, and you should check it out, doctorswhorock.com, and we, we honor the greats. We try to shine a light on the greats. We did a video last year, or two years ago, about the 100 doctors that were deceased, and, and there's also, it's called Get Your Life Back Now, two days of news you can use. A, a lot of the amazing um, doctors are gonna be there to present um, Dr. Boyd Haley, Dr. David Kennedy, um, Joe Mercola, and um, many more. It's in Florida, November 15th and 16th. Um, if you can and you want to, please be there. We might be rebroadcasting it. We're not even sure yet, but um, I just want to. Um, uh, www.doctorswhorock.com and getyourlifebacknow.live. So check it out. And um, even uh, Miss Anita will be there. I'll be in a party dress. She's going to be in a party dress and uh, a whole lot more. She'll be sharing and, and actually getting an award this year. And I'm super, super happy and proud to say that to you. You are my hero and my inspiration. And we've been around, we've been around the world together. I mean, we just... We haven't known each other yet. Nope. Once or twice, maybe, almost, but no. <laughs> yeah, with my big love. Thank you guys for attending. Thank you so much. God bless all of you, and please, we have to think consciously about what this is all about, and it's about your health. It's about your family's health. It's about, it's about freedom. It's about uh, the love of your, your neighbor. Thank you.